This is the coronary sinus lead. The lead's pre-shaped S-curve distal end tip is designed to allow optimal steerability and passive fixation. This is the magnetic guide wire which is inserted in the lead, allowing to engage target vessels by remote guidance. The magnetic guide wire is inserted into the coronary sinus lead now. Next, we set up the stereotaxis system before starting magnetic navigation. The desired magnetic field vectors can be set by tracing target vessels on orthogonal fluoroscopic views of two coronary venograms at 90 degrees of separation, shown on the computer workstation. This is done in order to construct a 3D vessel road map. In the two panels you can see how the road map reconstruction of the veins is performed. The left panel shows the right anterior oblique view, whereas the right one the left anterior oblique view. The left lateral vein is depicted in yellow and the anterior vein that is being reconstructed in this moment is pink. The system employs two large magnets external to the body set on each side of the patient creating a spherical magnetic field around the heart. Once the lead is inside the first targeted vein, the lateral branch, the magnetic field interacts with the tiny magnet on the guide wire and deflects it, allowing to overcome difficult vein takeoff and tortuous branch veins. As you can see, the wire can be directed at any angle and continuously turned for multiple sharp bends in the vein. The lead is then advanced over the guide wire to reach its tip at the apex of the lateral branch. The baseline six lean bleeds are shown. Next, we start stimulating from the target coronary sinus lateral side branch. The left lateral pacing results in Q waves in lead one. The pacing position appears to be stable, allowing to obtain PV loop parameters. The catheter is connected to a cardiac function lab for online display and acquisition of segmental and total left ventricle volumes, pressure, the synchrony and all the derived parameters. The left panels show sequential volume channels from apex to base along the axis of the conductance catheter, which are clearly aligned, demonstrating an impressive acute improvement of the synchrony. On the right panel you can see a marked improvement of other hemodynamic parameters, including stroke, volume and DPDT. Now we will assess whether a more proximal mid-basal position of the same lateral branch may result in a greater hemodynamic improvement. The magnetic tip is steered and navigated into the lateral vein to the desired target. After the guide wire reaches the desired position, the lead is pushed in order to reach it. The left simulation from the mid-basal position results in the same QRS-based morphology as in the previous apical position. However, the PV loop analysis showed that the hemodynamic response, despite similar electrocardiographic changes, in this position is different. The sequential volume channels from apex to base are aligned as in the previous position, but the PV loop area is smaller and the stroke volume and DPDT is lower than the lateral apical position. After assessing the lateral branch, we will place the magnetic guide wire in the anterior branch. On the top right panel of the screen, you can see the schematic representations of the coronary sinus and its branches in the right anterior and left anterior oblique views. On the bottom, the respective fluoroscopic images from the same projections are shown, with the vessel road map showing the lateral branch in yellow and the anterior one in pink. In all four panels, you can see the vector arrows represented in green and yellow. The green arrow represents the desired direction that the guide wire tip needs to take, whereas the yellow arrow is the direction of the magnetic field. As the yellow arrow is moving towards the green one, the magnetic field is constantly applied in order to steer the magnetic guide wire towards its final direction. Once the guide wire has reached the desired target, we then push the lead over the wire until we get to the guide wire's tip positioned in the anterior branch. The ECG pattern doesn't differ greatly before and during pacing in this site. The only difference is a slight shortening of the QRS complex. The left panels showing sequential volume channels from apex to base along the axis of the conductance catheter are not aligned as when pacing from the lateral branch, 
which results in no improvement of systolic and diastolic hemodynamic parameters. Although the first targeted branch showed a marked improvement of both the synchrony and hemodynamic parameters, we want to test pacing from other vessels. Here we are constructing the 3D vessel roadmap in blue of the posterior branch of the coronary sinus with the stereotaxis system as shown before. We are now navigating the magnetic guide wire into the coronary sinus branch like before. There are multiple reasons for difficult left ventricular lead implants which may be overcome by the stereotaxis system. In this case many difficulties were encountered including an absence of adequate veins, difficult vein takeoffs, tortuous branch veins, early takeoff of left ventricle lead branches. The branch is successfully cannulated by the magnetic guide wire and the lead is pushed to reach the position of the magnetic tip. Once we reach the desired position with the lead and after assessing the sensing and pacing thresholds, we evaluate the PV loops from this site. As you can see, there is a clear difference compared to the previously stimulated sites. There is still a marked dyssynchrony between the seven sequential segments of the left ventricle associated with the rightward shift of the PV loop, indicating a worsening of the cardiac function not justifying placing the lead in this site. We want to assess by venography whether there are additional, more distal sites in this vessel that we could pace from. As you can see from this view, the vessel continues along the ventricular wall, reaching the lateral wall of the left ventricle. This is confirmed by viewing the venography from the right anterior oblique projection. The 3D roadmap of the vessel is reconstructed in light blue based on the new venography. Considering that previous data show that the best hemodynamic response was obtained by stimulating from the lateral wall, we are going to try and navigate the guide wire deeper into the vessel to reach a more distal position laterally. This is confirmed by the QRS-based morphology showing a Q wave in lead 1. The lateral position in this branch doesn't result in hemodynamic improvement as shown by the PV loop recordings and analysis and is similar to that obtained from the more proximal position of the same branch. Sequential volume channels from apex to base are still not aligned, especially in the apical region which results in no improvement of systolic and diastolic hemodynamic parameters. After analyzing all the previous data, we think that the best hemodynamic site is the first targeted location in the lateral branch of the coronary sinus. The system stores previous venous approaches facilitating our return to the best lead location. This function allows us to move away from the sites with optimal hemodynamic response without fear of not being able to return if that is later shown to be the best site. Like before, pacing from the left lateral branch results in Q waves in lead 1 and the pacing position appears to be stable. The data clearly show an acute improvement in mechanical desynchrony resulting in enhanced systolic function. There is an increased stroke volume accompanied by increased DPDT and stroke work and the reduced diastolic pressure. The conductance catheter and the temporary right ventricular catheter are both retracted from the ventricles. The implantation can now be finalized. <laughs>